All righty, folks. The person that I quote most often in the daily financial news is Resi Club. Resi Club is Lance Lambert. Lance Lambert is Resi Club. And of course, we talk to him almost every Thursday. How you doing, sir? What's going on? Doing great. Housing, housing, housing. Always a lot going on. So since I've got you for only a little bit of time, I just want to go through your Twitter feed and call out a couple of things that you've done. Folks, if you're not following Lance on Twitter or X, what are you doing? We're going to start with your quote uh, from B of A, Bank of America, talking about Zonda expecting public builders share uh, to head towards 60%. If memory serves, it just got to over 50 at 51. And I actually want to remind you, you way back when, when Silicon Valley Bank went kaput, in commercial banking was a problem. I think I told you, Lance, this is going to be a problem. The bigger going to get bigger. Exactly. That 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 was your call right out of the gate was that essentially there'd be less liquidity in the market and it would be harder for the smaller builders to get it. The big builders can still get it and they have those in-house mortgage uh, 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 units. I mean, they actually have their own mortgage company in-house, a lot of them like DR Horton and Pulte Group to do those really aggressive buy downs. So you hit the nail on the head there. And the data is that all the way back during the housing boom in the 2000s, it was around like 25% market share for the publicly yep. builders. And then this year it just got to 51%. So it took another jump and Zonda saying now it's, it's going to 60%. And again, folks, I think you could see this playing out probably most obviously in the residential construction space, but it's really playing out across the, our economy. If you are a big company with a big cash balance seat, the ability to issue shares in the public market, borrow, you're winning, you're growing. And if you are a small business, medium business, don't have access to your commercial lenders, this is where we're seeing the big get bigger and the small get crushed. All right, number two, you have highlighted many adjustments of forecast. We got Bank of America again saying prices are going to go up 4% this year, but rents are actually going to go up 5%. That surprised me a little bit. It is single family rent, so there's that caveat. Yeah, exactly. And so what's getting cited a lot with these multi, uh, with the uh, uh, rents and you're hearing headlines about falling rents and, you know, uh, all these deals on rents and how cool the rental market is. The truth is that the single family market, which is a very small, it's a much smaller subset of the rental market, has done fairly well, all things considered, everything that's happened, the rate shock and everything. And if you look at a lot of the indices like Zillow for single family or CoreLogic, it looks like single family rents are up somewhere year over year, about three and a half to 5%. And Bank of America thinks that's going to continue uh, for this year. Yeah. The other thing that you did this week that literally made me laugh out loud, like hard, was the following tweet. And we got to thank Billionaire Barry because he's just, he's just that, he just keeps giving. In this world, nothing could be said to be certain except death, taxes, and Barry Sternlich going on CNBC begging for rate cuts. Good old billionaire Barry. That was so well done. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, through uh, Barry into that Benjamin Franklin uh, quote. Uh, yeah, he was on CNBC this week, uh, asked, you know, pretty much begging for more rate cuts. Of course, his fund has seen a lot of demands for redemptions. Uh, you know, they had to sell off their single family uh, for homes, you know, yeah. almost 2000 invitation homes, which is one of the things that's the best performing in their portfolio. And yeah. the reason being is some of these pockets of commercial distress and the uh, uptick and uh, redemptions to kind of get that liquidity. Yeah. Billionaire Barry is going when a billionaire brings PowerPoint to CNBC. That's a sign of stress. They're they're not in a good spot. That's that's my general rule of thumb. And, and and another thing about Barry is he's been doing this since I believe the summer of 2022. I mean, oh, the exactly. Started to move up. Yeah, and he did uh, it the two months after the Jackson Hole when the, when uh, Powell went out in the Jackson Hole meeting. He said, "I'm you know I'm kicking all the rich people in the nuts." Barry started complaining. Yep. I, I will say at some point Barry's going to be right it's where like, it's time to cut. Um and and. In all seriousness, yeah. I mean, yeah. we are like some of the more of the slowdown in the housing side now where it's like, okay, sellers have kind of resisted, but now these buyers are kind of throw, some of them in some pockets throwing in a towel. So, yeah. you know, at some point, this 500 basis point run up in rates, you know, Absolutely. it's going to, I think it would bite more. Yeah. 
Well, the next thing you talked about, you've, you've, uh, you're speaking near and dear to my heart. You're talking about existing home sales being in a recession. So hard hit. We got to go back to 1978. I'm like, oh, Lance is speaking my language. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> if you look at the last uh, seasonally adjusted existing home sales sprint, which was around 4.1 in April, mm -hmm. and you go all the way back and I to April 1978, it was 4.1 as well. And so that was the very top of that 70s housing boom. So I am kind of like, like taking the very tippity top of the 70s. But still, that the country back then had 100 million fewer people in it. It was around yeah. 240 million. Now we're 340 million. And so for us to be this far down for existing home sales in a much smaller country, I mean, existing home sales right now are at the same point they were in the 08 crash. Like that's how yeah. far down we are. It's yeah. just a very different dynamic that drove it down. And the similarity that took us here is actually similar to the fall off of that 78 one, which Absolutely. was 80, 81, 82. And like you pointed out, even before we started to see this huge drop off in existing home sales in 2022, is that once it occurred, it took years to get back. Now, I'm glad you brought that up because we're going to look at that right now, folks. I On my website, onerentsalatatime.com, I have a free asset that if you haven't gotten yet, you're just being lazy. It's called the 54-year spreadsheet, onerentsalatatime.com. I'm going to bring it up because, again, it shows so clearly what I'm talking about. Because one of the number one questions I get, Lance, is when – because, again, I talk to real estate agents and appraisers and you know all of these folks. It's like, when are we going to get back to normal, folks? I want you to look at this. We're going to highlight we're going to highlight these two rows. So let me just make these a color so it's easier for people to track and we'll just make them yellow. So here we are, 1978. Existing home sales, let's call it 4 million. If you do new and existing, we're at 4.8. That's the peak. This is for the year. It's not annualized, it's not month to month. This is just the annual number. And if you have any questions, the sources of the data are here. So, you know, don't yell at me if they're wrong. That's my sources are listed. So I just want you to think 4 million. And I want you to realize how long it took to go back to 4 million. All right. So we are a decade in. We're still below 4 million. We're 15 years in. We're still below 4 million. It doesn't get back until 1996. So folks, the answer to the when this might come back is it might take a decade. I'm not calling that but it might. It's crazy to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and so Goldman Sachs' new forecast is that they they have us this year essentially not moving up at all for existing home sales. Next year, going up to like 4.2, then slowly in like 2026, going up to, I believe, 4.3 or 4.4. And in 2027, they think we'll only be at 4.5. And so we were at 5.3 million in 2019. So they think that 2027 will still have 800,000 fewer existing home sales than 2019 in normal times. Now, now, I don't think it's fair to compare it from the tippity top of 2021, that 6.1, because who knows how long that's going to take. But, it could take but 15 for, years. It could. But for agents and people who make their money on transactions, not getting back to 2019 levels Agreed. for this long is, you know, this, you know, this hurts. And now what was survive until 2024 became survive until 2025 is quickly about, it looks like become survive till 2026 or later. Could be and, 27, yeah. uh, and I think this is kind of a good period for agents for this reason is that you're probably starting to get to the point and you've already gotten there the past several months where more agents are like, this isn't changing. I'm going to move and do something yeah. else. And for the the people who are in it for the long term, they need that. They need the capitulation of people being like, okay, Agreed. all these great calls that are saying we're going back to four or five, it's, it's not happening. I'm out of here. I got to go yeah. make bread. And yeah. so what, what, kind of looks like it could be bad in some ways could be good if we're getting to that psychological acceptance of, you know, existing isn't going to be back really quickly. Yeah. Now, the other thing is 
you know, some of these agents are finding more opportunity from the builders and builders have done well. New home sales have been fairly resilient and are essentially back to 2019 levels. They're not up to the boom period, but they are at back to normal times. And in during the pandemic housing boom, a lot of agents didn't have success with new construction because a lot of builders just cut out the oh, agents. Cut them out. Yeah. Now that has come back and builders do need that as especially as some of these buyers are kind of sitting on the sidelines. So, you know, the, that that would be the other silver lining for you. No, I'm glad you brought that up. One, one of the things I did an agent call, I don't know, two or three months ago, and I actually strongly recommended if I was an agent today in my buy box or my area, I would go meet every builder. I would create a, a you know, a, a binder, an online presence for every builder. I would know everything going on and I would just be a lead source. That That's exactly what yeah. I would be doing. Um yeah, it's pretty tough. Well, the and, last and thing we're going to... Go ahead. One other thing that uh, an, a loan officer reached out to me today to remind me that, you know, that 78 one, it was probably a lot more finance people or people were financing loans, taking out mortgages, right? Sure. Whereas this one, we're at multi-decade highs for all cash buying right now. True. Because, uh, you know, as people sell, more of them are like, you know what? Rates are so high. I'll just roll that into the next house. And so for loan officers, this one in particular is a very nasty um, downturn. For Well, that's for why you see a lot of them excited by this whole Freddie Mac, potentially Fannie Mae second story, right? A lot of them are getting like, hey, we, we need something new. We need a new product. And the seconds might be a way to get a, a little something going. So, yeah. My, my mind was blown when I didn't realize until I was reading recently that in 1981 and 1980, there was only a billion dollars in second mortgages. It was a teeny, teeny, tiny sliver. Most of them didn't even do it. And yep. then in 1980 to 1981, the legislation was passed that it allowed that door to be opened. And so by the end of 1981, second mortgages started to take off. Hmm. And then from that period to 2008, we went from $1 billion in second mortgages to a trillion. Oh, that was the slope. So the wow. one uh, housing downturn was really what helped to create that marketplace. And it slowly just picked up steam over time. Now, today, even though inflation has went up significantly since 08, we yep. still only have a $300, $400 billion marketplace for second mortgages compared to what was a trillion. Yeah. Uh, so that market has really come back down. But I would think in this period where so many people are locked up and you already have Freddie Mac pushing it. Next thing I've heard that Fannie Mae is next. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's coming. I've talked to brokers right. big in the business and Fannie Mae will be right behind them. Really? You've heard that too? Interesting. Uh, so I, at this point, I don't know if that's rumors or where we're, you know, but it, it sounds logical that it goes Freddie, then Fannie and the marketplace expands more. So it'll be interesting to kind of see what this, you know, mortgage rate shock in this period creates, like what comes yeah. out of this period. Yeah, totally agree. And then the last thing I want to talk about, I want to be sensitive to your time is we are finally seeing inventory build. 7% rates has always been that line in the sand for me. We've been above seven. We're actually ticking pretty low. I think 7.03 was your number yesterday. Uh, but we are seeing May inventory total roughly 800,000 off a low of call it 450,000 in 2021. Not quite back to 2019, which was roughly 1.2, but heck, we are we are certainly off the bottom. It, yeah, and so we, we aren't seeing like a flood of new listings coming into the market, but think of it like a car dealership where even if the amount of deliveries to the lot isn't much, but if right. just much isn't moving, and you start to then, you know, it starts to stack up as those new deliveries come in and people aren't buying the cars as fast. And as that lot gets full, deals are coming, right? Deals exactly. Come. Now, it doesn't need to be a huge amount of deals because the 08 one was not only was it already a packed lot, it was already a packed lot and they had cars off to the side and all over the place. And then there was a massive flood of cars still pouring into that already packed lot. And That's they stopped the lending and they stopped buyers exactly. lending. That was the yeah, big exactly. one. So that was the foreclosure wave into a pack lot, very different. But this, if you have a lot that starts to build, if that lot does build, then as it gets too jammed, you start to get some more deals. 
Now, this, yeah, this is important, Lance, because I want people to realize this. I've been calling this. I'm trying to get people to realize the time to do the work is now, right? Watch days on market, watch inventory. There are people in this market that are called motivated sellers. For three years, Lance, a motivated seller has been nearly impossible to find. Yeah. Trust me, as lots fill up, the person who needs to sell is going to raise yep. their hand. I have a four example for you. This is recorded. You can go back and watch the interview with Matt, the mortgage guy. Matt, the mortgage guy said a broker in Sacramento. He shared it yesterday. It's already live. He got a call from a real estate agent. Real estate agent is representing a seller. The seller owns their house free and clear. The seller needs to get out because they want to be with their grandkids. The seller is on the cusp of taking a significant price reductions, mm -hmm. double digits in percentage. So what the agent is trying to do is get ahead of that and tell people to write offers now, right? Write a disrespectful offer. Yeah. The sellers, the seller is already gone. They just need somebody to buy it. So somebody's going to get a deal. The, the deals are out there. We just got to do the work now. The market is changing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, exactly. And if you start to get a few states like the Florida, the Texas, where inventory has built a lot more, and Texas is actually above pre-pandemic levels for active listings, despite affordability being way more strained now than it was in 2019. But uh, as those markets, if they start to give up more on price, especially in the seasonally half, second half of the year, what will happen is the headlines are going to change very quickly. And exactly. so some of these sellers who have to sell, like they have to sell, yeah, they're, they're going to be, in, they could be in an environment where if rates are so high and the headlines have changed, their psychological willingness to kind of like back up more uh, could be increased for the ones who have to. Then there's, yeah. you know, there still will be probably some who are like, you know, F it, I'm out of here and some delistings. Uh, but for the motivated ones, like you said, that's, you yeah. got to find the motivated ones. Yeah, well, we're going to find in the very near future, probably by August or September. Like when, I, when I brought that point up, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to convince anybody to buy, sell or anything. No, ne That's neither of us. I just wanted to do the of, work. Yeah, just giving the advice of where a second half of the year in a different environment when seasonality pulls back and you, if you have active still building, there could be more motivated sellers out there. Yeah, with no, less followers. Yeah, Lance is being very political. I'll tell you straight. You'll have the motivated sellers are always out there in every market. Some markets are easier to find than others. It's just fact. I've been doing it for 25 years. But here's the other thing is when you list a home, I typically put you in one of two camps. You either want to sell or you need to sell. So if you are a want to seller and we head into the second half, it's slower. The buyers have revolted. If you're a want to seller, you'll take them, you'll take it off and you'll try next spring. But if you need to sell and you get out at 30 days, 45 days, you're going to have price reductions. Price reductions, I think, according to Alto's research, last time I saw was over 35%, maybe 35.1%. Um, we could see that jump. But we're also going to see people start to pull listings, is my guess. But we'll see. Yeah. And then the other thing is if you start to get give up. Does what happens to inventory? Does inventory still build or is the inventory like then at that point, like, okay, it kind of levels off or it pulls back. That's a, a lot of this is going to be, be dependent on where that active listing level gets to. I agree. But, uh, and, and a lot of the reason that it has built is because some of these sellers have still been so stubborn and they yep. have, you know, expectations yeah. from 2022. Yeah. We undoubtedly have people who want to sell still listed today that will be taking it off in 90 days because wish pricing is not working anymore. Uh, we just don't know how much. Is it 1% of the market? Is it 12%? We have no idea. But in the next 90 days, I think we will find out when you start to see listings withdrawn. Lance, you do a lot of amazing stuff on Twitter, which we went through. But your thing is Resi Club, Resi Club Pro, Resi Club Analytics. Where should people go to follow you and interact? Yeah, they'd like to subscribe to the free list. Uh, they could go to resiclubanalytics.com. I also have a premium list that's a three additional articles per week and then access to my inventory tracker for 3,000 counties, 800 metros, and then my price tracker as well. Uh, and so it's resiclubanalytics.com. And then my Twitter is at News Lambert.
Folks, if you're studying a buy box, which is what I talk about all the time, you have to get the Resi Cub Pluro. That's going to give you historicals down to the zip code. It's just an amazing asset to have at your disposal. Lance, keep it up. Keep being amazing. Thank you. Yeah.